Motor drivers are a very important component when working with robotics or mechatronics projects. So in this video we will discuss in details about motor drivers. We will basically cover four topics which are What is a motor driver? How the motor driver works? We will learn about some popular motor drivers. And in the end, we will know how to choose suitable motor driver. Since this is a details video, it's going to be a little longer, so stay tuned. Welcome to SD Robotics. So what is a motor driver? It is known by the name that it drives the motor. The motor driver acts as an amplifier, it converts the low current signal into a high current signal, which helps to drive the motor. But why is this conversion needed? Suppose we have a motor, which runs on 12 volts, and it draws a current of 1 amp. Now we want to run it with the help of microcontrollers. But the Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano-like microcontrollers capable to provide only 5 volts output. Whereas Raspberry Pi or Node MCU can only provide 3.3 volts output. So if we connect the motor with the Arduino directly, then the motor will only get a 5 volt and 20 milliamp current, and the motor will not work at full potential. It could also damage the Arduino. Motor drivers are used to solving this problem. Now in this circuit motor driver is installed between the motor and controller, it is getting power from the 12 volt external power source, and it's getting a control signal from Arduino. Motor driver amplifying this control signal with the help of external power and sends it to the motor. Now the motor has enough voltage and current to operate at its full potential. Now we will know how the motor driver works. Motor drivers which are made up of circuits are called H-bridge. On the left side, there is a diagram of an H-bridge. It has four switches, S1, S2, S3, and S4. Where S1 and S3 are connected to the same control signal, which means if S1 is on then S3 is on, and if S1 is off then S3 is also off. The scenario is the same for S2 and S4, and at the center of the diagram is a motor. The top and bottom sides are VCC and ground. On the right side, there is a table. The first column shows the position of S1 and S3, the second column shows the position of S4 and S2, and the last column shows the state of the motor. Now all four are switched off, so there is no current flowing through the circuit, and the motor is at a stop position. Now we will turn S1 and S3 on. Current will go from VCC to ground through to S1, motor, and S3. The current on the motor will be A to B direction, and the motor will rotate clockwise. Now we will turn S1 and S3 off, and S2 and S4 on. Current will go from VCC to ground through to S4, motor, and S2. The current on the motor will be B to a direction, and the motor will rotate anti-clockwise. Now if we turn all the switches on, then current directly flows from VCC to ground, and this will create a short circuit situation. Your driver may also be damaged in this situation. In actual motor driver, transistors are used instead of switches. This is a basic diagram of a transistor-based motor driver, where two NPN and two PNP transistors have been used. But transistors are quite inefficient, that's why in replacement of transistors, MOSFETs have been used. In MOSFET-based driver, 2N-channel and 2P-channel MOSFETs have been used in replacement of NPN and PNP transistors. Let's take a look at some popular motor drivers. The most popular motor driver is L293D motor driver, which is widely used and very inexpensive. It's a dual-channel transistor-based motor driver, which means this driver can operate two motors separately. It can control both the speed and spinning direction of two DC motors. Let's take a look at the pinout of this IC. On the left side, all the control inputs are given for motor 1, including one enable pin, which allows PWM signal to control motor speed. Pin 3 and pin 6 provide output for motor 1. In the same way, the control signal for the second motor is available on the right side, and pin 11 and pin 14 provide output for the second motor. Pin 16 is a 5 volt input, which is used to run the driver. 
Pin 8 is VCC for the motor, so if you are using a 9 volt motor then you will provide 9 volts on this pin, if it is a 12 volt motor then you have to provide 12 volts over here. And finally, for ground pins, pin 4, 5, 12, and 13. Let's check some key specifications of this driver. Motor voltage. It can handle motors from 4.5 volts to 36 volts. Motor current. It can provide 600 milliamps of current continuously and 1.2 amps at a pick. It has an inbuilt auto thermal shutdown for thermal protection. And last but not least, it supports PWM signals to control motor speed. This IC is available in the market in the form of various easy to use modules, like normal standalone modules, advanced standalone modules with voltage regulator and indicator LEDs, and as a form of Arduino shield with multiples L293DIC and shift resistors. Our next driver is L298N based motor driver module. It is a high voltage, high current, transistor based dual H bridge driver, which means this driver can operate two motors separately. Due to its very low cost, it is perfect for robotics and mechatronics projects. Let's take a look at the pinout of this module. All the control inputs are given in pin header form at the bottom side, which contains four direction pins, along with two enable pins. In the following driver output channels for the motors are broken out to the edge of the module with two screw terminals. The L298N motor driver module is powered through three pin screw terminals. It consists of pins for motor power supply, followed by ground and 5 volt logic power supply. But you can avoid logic power supply, as this module has built in 5 volt voltage regulator. Let's check some key specifications of this driver. Motor voltage. It can operate up to 46 volts. Motor current. Each channel on the module can handle up to 2 amps current continuously and 3 amps at a pick. There is a current sense for each motor, which helps to protect the driver at overcurrent. It supports PWM signals up to a frequency of 40 kHz to control motor speed. The driver module has a built-in heatsink to enhance heat dissipation. Our next driver is the TB6612FNG. It's a MOSFET-based dual-channel motor driver, which can independently control two bidirectional DC motors. The MOSFET-based H-bridges are much more efficient than the BJT-based H-bridges used in older drivers, such as the L298N or L293D. This little breakout board by SparkFun gives you direct access to all of the features of this driver, also adds power supply capacitors and reverse battery protection on the motor supply. Let's take a look at the pinout of this module. All the control inputs are given on the right side of the breakout board, which contains four direction pins, along with two enable pins. Enable pins support PWM input that controls the speed of the motor. On the left side, there are four pins to provide outputs to the motors. Logic supply voltage can be in the range of 2.7 to 5.5 volts, while the motor supply voltage is limited to a maximum voltage of 15 volts. This IC has a power saver standby mode, during ideal conditions this mode helps to save lots of power. Let's check some key features and specifications. Motor voltage. Recommended motor voltage is 4.5 volts to 15 volts, but it can operate down to 2.5 volts with derated performance. Motor current. Each channel on the module can handle 1.2 amps current continuously and 3 amps at a pick. As discussed earlier, this driver supports low power standby mode. It supports PWM signals up to a frequency of 100 kHz to control motor speed. And finally, this driver produces very less amount of heat, although it has a built-in thermal shutdown feature. Our last driver is VNH2SP30. It's a MOSFET-based full-bridge motor driver, intended for a wide range of automotive applications. It is quite expensive, but the main attraction of this driver is, it can handle a very high amount of current. It's a single-channel IC, which means you can drive only one motor using this. This driver is available in the form of a very thin breakout board. Although it is quite expensive, it's a perfect choice for high-current intensive motors. All the control inputs are given on the right side of the breakout board which contains two direction pins, along with one enable pin and one PWM pin to controls the speed. Next, there is a current sense output to sense motor current, a logic voltage pin, and a ground pin. Finally, motor voltage output and input pins are located at the top and bottom sides of the breakout board. Let's check some key features and specifications. Motor voltage. It can handle motors from 12 volts to 16 volts. Motor current. 
It can handle up to 14 amps current continuously and 30 amps at a pick. There is a current sense output to sense motor current. It supports PWM signals up to a frequency of 100 kHz to control motor speed. And finally, this driver produces very less amount of heat, although it has a built-in thermal shutdown feature. This driver is available in the form of various breakout board in the market, like single-channel module, dual-channel module, and dual-channel Arduino shield. So let's have a look what are the differences between transistor-based and MOSFET-based drivers. Transistor-based drivers are slightly larger than MOSFET-based drivers. Transistor-based drivers produce more heat than MOSFET-based drivers, so heat shink has to be used in these drivers. MOSFET-based drivers are more efficient, they are about 91 to 95% efficient, but the efficiency of transistor-based drivers is only 40 to 70%. A voltage drop of around 1.4 volts is observed in transistor-based drivers, whereas the voltage drop in MOSFET-based drivers is negligible. Transistor-based drivers are more cost-effective than MOSFET-based drivers. And after all, transistor-based drivers are more effective for small and DIY projects, while MOSFET-based drivers are more effective for larger or battery-operated projects. How to choose a suitable motor driver for a project? To choose a motor driver, we have to take care of four parameters. The first parameter is motor voltage. The motors we usually use in robotics are 6, 12, or 24 volts, so when choosing a motor driver, we must make sure that the driver supports the motor voltage. The second parameter is motor current. The stall current in the motor is taken as the maximum current. Because the motor torque is highest in a stall condition. When choosing a motor driver, we need to see that the motor stall current is close to the motor driver's continuous current. The third parameter is the purpose. If you use a motor driver for your DIY project, then you can use a cheap transistor best motor driver. But if you are doing a practical project then it is better to use MOSFET-based motor drivers. The fourth and final parameter is the power source. If your project is battery-powered then you must use MOSFET-based driver, because MOSFET-best driver is much more efficient than the transistor-best driver, and power loss is much less. We're at the very end of the video. This picture gives a detailed comparison of the specifications of all the types of motor drivers that we have discussed for so long. Here is an additional driver which is from Citron Company. We haven't discussed this before because it's not as popular as the others. But durability and efficiency of this driver is very high, that's why it is suitable for heavy mechatronics projects. So we ended this video here. I hope you can learn something new from this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends.